It's best to use uh, different approaches, and I'll explain how, how they work and when you would use one versus the another. Yeah, so the objective is to talk about the different uh, modeling approaches for both uh, low flow and high flow. Low flow is when the flow is going underneath the bridge, it's not impacting the deck, it's not going over the bridge. And high flow is when it's impacting the bridge or it's going over the bridge, um, and you have pressurized flow and, and overtopping if it's going over. Um, and then we'll learn how to select the different approaches and talk about at the end some situations like unique unique cases in, uh, for in, in modeling bridges like uh, skewed bridges and, and such. All right. So some uh, references. Obviously, the we have a hydraulic reference manual, manual and a user's manual. If you Google that, you'll find it. Gary, our old uh, PI, wrote this report back in 1995. This was when brass was pretty new. It must have been like one or two years old. Um, back then, and they were comparing HC RAS to HC2, and how the different, uh, and also WISPRO. We'll talk a little bit more about WISPRO, how the bridge hydraulics were computed and the, the differences. A lot of the bridge computations in RAS were based on HC2, and that was so that people would transition from one to the other. I think now, if we were to design it, we would do th some things uh, differently. Um, and this report talks about th those differences, some of the differences that were made at the, at the, you know, in the first versions of RAS. And I think for the most part, everything in this report back from 1995 is still the same. Like the, the bridge computations haven't changed since then. Um, Federal Highways has uh, several reports. These are the ones that I find useful for, for modeling bridges and RAS. Um, not just 1D, but also 2D. This is a, a a 2D modeling focused uh, report. This one over here with SRH2D. This bridge design uh, report and, and this one, um, this, a lot of this, this stuff made it into the RAS. It's kind of cool here that they have a price of 40 cents in the report. There's different flow types at bridges. There's, I, I mentioned low flow and high flow. Low flow has, diff they're called different classes. So that depends on whether it's subcritical through the bridge, uh, if you have mixed flow or supercritical. You can have a low flow with a weir where the bridge is behaving like a weir, and I'll show a picture of that later. You can have pressure flow, so the bridge is hitting the deck and it's, it's pressurized underneath the bridge. And then you can have highly submerged flows where the, you know, if you have a, a low flow bridge that was designed for low flows, those, those can be highly submerged uh, during floods. Those need to be treated uh, differently. So this is an example of a low flow bridge that's functioning as a weir. And the way we determine the flow conditions, the flow type for low flow is using momentum. And by momentum I mean the specific force, which is the, this term over here that we talked, we talked about yesterday some, when we talked about the momentum approach for bridges. So class A is subcritical flow that occurs when the momentum downstream is larger then the, the momentum inside the bridge associated with critical depth. Uh, mixed flow occurs when the momentum downstream is less than the momentum inside the bridge associated with critical depth. And so that in that case, it's assumed that the flow goes through uh, critical depth uh, inside the bridge. And then class C is when uh, the flow is uh, supercritical th throughout the bridge, when it goes in and out of the bridge. The different methods that we're going to talk about only apply between cross sections two and three. The bridge computations from cross sections one to two and three to four are the same no matter what bridge modeling approach you choose. So the, what we're talking about in this presentation is from two to three. That's what the bridge uh, methods <coughs> apply. It doesn't apply to the other ones. There's four methods available in RAS to compute the bridge hydraulics. There's the energy equation which is also called the standard step method. The same thing that is computed away from the bridge, like with using the energy equation. There's a momentum balance, which uses the equation similar to what we talked about yesterday for like uh, junctions, basically using that uh, balance of a specific force at the bridge. And then we have your Arnell's equation and, and WISPRO specific for low flow conditions. Um, so in the energy method, we talked about this equation yesterday, the energy equation and this is how it's balanced it's, it's very similar to the, uh, you know other places except now you have uh, different cross sections um, but everything else is basically the same the velocity weighting coefficient alpha and then you have the energy loss 
which includes the contraction, expansion, and friction losses. And this approach uh, works well. It's very stable. It works well for low flow, but also very high submerged flows. It's well behaved. It's not going to give you crazy answers. In the energy method, the losses are computed based on the, the length and that friction slope. The wetted perimeter from like the piers and abutments, that all adds wetted perimeter and increases your friction. And then the energy losses from contraction and expansion are included in that extra term in the losses that includes a contraction and expansion coefficient. Um, and the difference between the kinetic energy, the velocity had uh, between the two cross sections. It doesn't account for the shape of the, the piers and there's no like impact force losses in this method, like in the momentum equation. So in the momentum equation, this goes from cross sections two to three, but we also have those two other cross sections inside, right, at the bridge that we call BD and BU. And so that's why there's, there's three equations here. And they're all the same. Well, the, the formulation is the same, right? You have the friction and the weight and the specific force uh, terms, right? But here, the uh, impact force from the losses from the, the, the piers is included here from cross sections three to, to BU. And I was talking about this yesterday with, with the, the team, and initially this, this was kind of weird to me because the piers are not in, those, in between those two cross sections, right? The piers are underneath the bridge, obviously. And so to me, it kind of made sense to include them between these two cross sections, BD and BU, right? But this is, represents kind of the impact force losses, and most of that loss happens right at the pier, and the piers are tiny compared to the size of the bridge, right? So even though this loss occurs underneath the bridge, most of it occurs at the upstream side of the bridge, and so that's why if you want to see it represented in the water levels, you have to include it between B, U, and 3. That's why it's in, in this place. And as far as this drag coefficient that rela that's related to the, the shape of the pier, we have tables in the user manual that you can go look up for different types of piers, circular piers, square nose piers, and different kinds. And uh, they, they do vary, you know, from 0.3 to 1.62 even. So there's, there's significant variation in those. There's, there's pier shapes that are a lot more efficient than others, obviously. Okay, in the momentum equation, the friction losses include skin friction through the wetted perimeter, right? And that's, that's multiplied by the length between the, the cross sections. The weight of the, the water is included, right? It has that, that pressure gradient kind of term. And then the pier shape is included through that drag coefficient that we mentioned. Okay, your Niles equation, this was developed based on lab experiments over 2,000 lab experiments, but it was developed for kind of rectangular trapezoidal channels. So it gets used a lot in those types of applications like the LA River, it gets used a lot there. Outside of those types of applications, it doesn't work very well. So I think this is one of the methods that will get uh, deprecated for, for RAS 7.0 because honestly, the, the momentum equation works just as well for these types of rivers. And this has a bunch of parameters in it. You can see three, right? And it's very sensitive to those parameters because in this K, um, it can have a lot of variation, this shape coefficient, and it's actually squared. So small changes in that have a big, uh, produce a large change in your energy loss. And also alpha. Alpha is even to the fourth power. So small changes in that alpha make a huge difference in your results, right? I don't recommend it. And you'll see it in your workshop where it's at, and it's actually checked in that workshop. I would just uncheck that. <laughs> At least for K, there's a table that we have for the different types of pier shape. There's different values. And you can see that it goes from 0.9 to 2.5. And if you square that value, that's a huge difference. Um, so it's very sensitive to K. OK, this is what I was talking about, that it's based on lab experiments for rectangular trapezoidal channels. And it should be limited to uniform cross sections where there's not a lot of the contractions and expansions also. The WISPRO method is very similar to the energy based method or the standard step method we call um, but you'll see that in this approach the expansion and the contraction losses are separated from the friction losses in this equation and the other one they were combined that's a, a minor a minor difference but they're computed very differently right 
the, the terms for how to compute the, the contraction and expansion losses are very different. It's much more complicated. And this is a formulation that was developed by Federal Highways, but in RAS, we really don't utilize it that much. We tend to use the energy approach or the momentum approach. For class B flow, momentum is the default. So the, the model automatically uses the momentum approach to determine what class of flow it is. And depending on the class, it will use that, that method, the appropriate method. And for class C, and if you remember, class C is the supercritical flow one. And in that case, either method can, can be used. Okay, now high flow. If the, the flow is really high and the, the bridge is very submerged, then the recommended method is this energy method, the standard step method. The, the issue with the energy method is that it doesn't account for the shape of the, the piers. There's no like drag coefficient in that formulation. As far as like the conveyance within the, the bridge opening, it adds that weighted parameter and modifies the area within the o bridge opening, but that's all really, that's, that's all it does. If you have pressure and weir flow, then there's two kinds of pressure flow through the bridge. There's, if the water is hitting the upstream end of the bridge, but the downstream side is not hitting the deck, then that's kind of like orifice flow, and there's a, a specific equation for that. But if both sides of the bridge are submerged, then there's a different formulation for that. That's pressurized flow. Um, and RAS automatically switches from one to the other depending on what the stage is doing, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, and the, the flow over the roadway is computed with the, a weir equation, and you can specify the, uh, the weir for that, and it takes care of also the submergence. You know, as the, the tailwater elevation becomes higher, there's a submergence correction for that weir flow, and automatically takes care of that. Okay, so this is what I was talking about, that you can have a pressure flow where it behaves more like a sluice gate. If the, the upstream water level is hitting the deck, but the downstream one is not, this is the equation for computing the flow through the bridge opening. And this is the discharge coefficient. It's not the drag coefficient, CD, that you see in some places. This is the discharge coefficient. And in the workshop, you guys are going to uh, calibrate this. If you leave it empty, it'll use, it says uh, a use table or something like that. But really, it's, it's, it's a table of these values. Um, but for the workshop, you'll have to calibrate, adjust this value to, to uh, match the water surface elevations. You're, you're going to have observed data. You're, you're going to try to match that observed data, and one of the parameters that you're going to change is this discharge coefficient. And so this kind of gives you a range for that, that value. The other type of pressure flow at a bridge is orif when you have orifice flow, when both sides are submerged of the bridge, and this is the equation that, that is used to compute that. And the weir flow. So in this case, right, we, it uses this equation to compute the flow through the, the bridge opening, and then the weir equation to compute the flow over the bridge and submergence, right? This is the submergence co uh, correction that's done to the weir flow. There's some situations where it's very obvious which bridge method to use and other cases where it's not. In this case, if you were to model this bridge and you had low flow like this, what approach would be applicable to this bridge? Based on what we've talked about, of all the methods, what, what, what approach is good for this bridge? What's that? Energy. Yeah, because energy treats the cross sections at the bridge just like any other cross section, and in this case, the bridge is not really impacting the flow that much, right? There's there's one pier in the water and it's not doing much, so the the energy equation would be the the, the best low flow approach for this bridge. In situations where the the pier losses are very important, then the momentum equation is probably the most applicable, but the energy and the whisper methods can also be used. And there's an option in RAS where you can try both and then take the higher of the, the two upstream water surfaces, and that is a, a good approach to follow. So this is another case where the, uh, the momentum equation would be a good, a good option to use because those peers um, are pretty significant and probably do impact the flow somewhat. It says or Yalnell method, but 
I wouldn't use your nail for this this bridge. It's not really a trapezoidal rectangular channel. Really, I think momentum equation for this one. What about this one? What if you were modeling this bridge but with the high flow? You know, this it, the picture kind of shows a low flow, but what if it was a high flow? Yeah, I, I, I mentioned that um, in the beginning. Low flow is when the flow is not impacting the deck. And as soon as it touches the deck and you have like orifice flow or pressurized flow, then it's called high flow. There's no medium flow, it's just low or high. <laughs> so this one, what, what uh, bridge modeling approach would, would be good for this? The energy method would be good. It's not going to be pressurized, right? Because it's kind of like the structure is porous and it's probably not obstructing the flow much either. So I think the energy approach would, would be a good one for that. What about this one? Momentum. Yeah, that's right. Okay. There's some specific unique cases when you're modeling bridges that you may run into. One of them is uh, perched bridges, and a perched bridge is when kind of just the, the bridge itself, kind of the deck, is above the floodplain, and, and the roadways are inside the, the floodplain. And um, because of that, it's not really justified to model this, uh, this flow as, as weir flow using the weir equation, so it's more appropriate to use the uh, energy-based uh, uh, um, uh, modeling approach. Low water bridges, so these are bridges that were designed for low flows and get overtopped a lot. And when they get overtopped, they can be highly submerged. These also are best modeled with the, uh, the energy-based approach. And then you have skewed bridge. This, this actually is pretty common. We have a simple way of dealing with skewed bridges and RAS that works pretty reasonably well, but it only works well for low skew angles, like below 30, I would say even less than 30. If your bridge is really highly skewed, then this pr approach doesn't work very well. Um, and it's pretty simple to, to enter. This is where you go and you, and you actually talks about that here, the angles that it's appropriate for. Um, and these are the two angles that you, you can enter and then where it, it accounts for that skewness. So it, it, uh, with those corrections, it makes an equivalent bridge that would be per perpendicular to the, f the flow. And then you have parallel bridges. So this is common at divided roadways where you have you know one lane in each direction, and they're they're very close together. If if there's no significant contraction and expansion in between the bridges and they're fairly close to each other, you can model those as a single bridge. But if they're far apart enough and there's some ex contraction and expansion in between the bridges, then you have to put some cross sections in between and model them as separate bridges. And then multiple bridge openings. Uh, this is something that we don't have time to cover a lot in this class, but uh, it's something that you can do in RAS and know that there's two main approaches. There's the multiple openings approach where you uh, basically it's assuming that there's a, a single stage, you know, on either side of the bridge and it does it solves an, an iterative approach to iteratively computes the flows at the at the multiple bridge openings up to seven of them in order to match the energy grade and water surface upstream of the bridge. And then the other approach is this divided flow approach. And in that one, it's essentially like, hot, like splitting your river into multiple um, uh, small reaches. And um, those are solved uh, kind of independently. The, the trick with this one is that you have to decide the flow split upstream of the bridge and how, how that flow is directed into the multiple uh, bridge openings. Um, so you can do that. That's all I have for bridges.